Humber School of Health Sciences presents giving feedback to students in the clinical setting. Research strongly shows that giving feedback to students in the clinical setting is necessary for academic growth. Students need frequent direction or redirection as they simulate care in the laboratory setting and then transfer skills to the healthcare setting and care for living people in an ever changing environment. Students also need to trust their teacher, one who creates a safe learning environment during their clinical hours and provides opportunity to clarify misunderstandings or just debrief a situation. Fear, intimidation, humiliation, or manipulation should never be motivating tools when teaching the student how to care for another human being. Teachers should facilitate learning in a positive way so that students can function safely in the healthcare setting and clearly understand their limitations. One way to reduce student stress and increase learning is to use positive body language while engaging with a student. A smile, nodding your head, or lending a hand in assistance all go a long way to encourage a student. Another way to affirm a student's action is to give a simple verbal prompt such as, right, okay, that's good, and so forth. Okay, so let's finish this. All right, um, I'm having trouble getting the rest of the air out of the needle. Well, remember that you have to pull back the plunger first. All right, I forgot about that. Go. Good, good, good. Now advance it slowly until you see it beat out the syringe. Slowly, slowly. Oh, perfect. That's good. Okay, yeah, that worked a lot better. Now the air is out. Nice. Um, do I recap it now? Yep. Carefully so you don't poke yourself. Okay, you ready to go see your patient? Yeah, I'm just a bit nervous. That's okay. Of course, this is easy when the student is doing what they're supposed to do. When a student is doing something incorrectly, it needs to be addressed. This can be done in such a way so that the patient does not become frightened, but the student recognizes their error, stops what they're doing, or corrects their actions and continues. Utilizing safe redirection approaches permits the student to correct behavior without losing confidence or motivation. Sometimes the teacher can correct the situation using body language only, and other times a teacher must actively engage the student in dialogue during the activity. Okay, so we're just going to practice, okay? Right, so take this. You clean it? Nice. Okay. Okay, remember that you, you hold it like a dart. Okay. Now anchor the site. Okay. Anchor the, put the heel of your hand here, perfect. And then give it. Now what do we do afterwards? Give it. Inject. Mm -hmm. Now what? Pull out. Yeah. And take an alcohol swab. Right. Wipe it off. Good. Mm. And then flip Close it up that. and throw it away. Put it away. Perfect. That was good. Really good. The student had to be corrected several times during the process, but the teacher did it in such a way that the student was able to successfully give the needle and not scare the patient. The student knows that she did not perform the skill correctly but still has the satisfaction of doing something to make the patient feel better. In addition, as she practices this skill, she now has the experience to reflect on. The teacher's tone of voice and calm during the event have gone a long way to reinforce learning. The student is not afraid of the teacher and will be more accepting of the debriefing that will follow. So how do you think that went? I think I did pretty good. Okay, so tell me some of the things I told you to do during the procedure. Um, you told me to go slower because I was a bit nervous. That's right. Uh, what else did I tell you? Um, to hold the needle like a dart. Uh, can you just talk me through the technique of giving a shot, like go through the procedure? Right now? Yeah, right now. I don't really remember. There's a lot of steps. Okay, so what would you do before you give a needle to your next patient? Practice doing it. Okay, practice is good. What else could you do? Maybe some research. All right, some research. So what I'd like you to do tonight when you go home is I'd like you to practice. So take a, a needle with you and stuff, and I'd like you to practice on your brother 15 times. Practice giving it. Don't give him a real needle, but practice giving him a needle 15 times. The other thing I'd like you to do is read about it in your textbook and make sure you know all the steps okay. so that tomorrow when we give your patient a needle, you, I don't have to talk you through it so much. Um, and then I'd like you to send me a paragraph tonight, uh, a reflection on what you did today and what your plan is for tomorrow. How does that sound? Sounds good. Okay, good job. The student knows she did not prepare well enough. She also knows what she must do in order to increase her knowledge and skills before clinical tomorrow. She is also aware that there are consequences for her actions and her lack of preparedness to practice. 
She is aware that she has created more work for herself as a consequence of not being prepared in the first place. The patient got his shot and was not afraid of the student, in large part based on the teacher's constant feedback and support during the needle administration. The teacher has maintained a neutral stance and kept the focus on the student and practice expectations rather than making the remedial work personal. The teacher has wisely chosen her words and tone of voice carefully in this interaction. When debriefing with students during clinical, maintain a neutral tone of voice, keeping a neutral facial expression if possible. Don't make the interaction about you and your expectations. After all, you will not be there when the student begins independent practice. They should not be motivated by your presence. Your job is to increase the student's awareness about being prepared, the consequences of not preparing, and to help the student increase self-motivation and learn how to regulate their need to do research and prepare. To keep the conversation about the task at hand, don't start an interaction with the word if. The word if is often followed by a threat. Conversations that start with a threat don't go well. Change the word if to the word when, and the comment won't be perceived as a threat. Here's an example of the same conversation. First using the word if, then using the word when. The interaction has become about a power struggle between the teacher and student and is personal. Now let's take a look at the second example. The interaction is focused on the student and the consequences of not being prepared. Feedback in the clinical setting should happen frequently and consistently. Students need to know when they're performing well and when there are deficits. Teachers should explain what feedback looks like and then consistently follow through. Remember, use a neutral tone of voice, affirm whenever possible. Don't use intimidation, humiliation, fear, or manipulation to motivate your student. Use when instead of if when engaging in conversations where there are consequences for a student's behavior. Be consistent in your feedback technique with all the students in your group. Don't play favorites. Keep feedback focused on students' behavior, not on you. Follow through with program policy and procedures. Feedback is a necessary professional development aspect of supporting students' growth into future healthcare professionals. The teacher's role is to consistently and frequently engage in verbal, nonverbal, and written feedback to students. This is important in both the laboratory and actual healthcare clinical practice settings. Teachers need to develop a safe and trusting relationship with their students in order to maximize feedback opportunities. Students need to engage in feedback sessions frequently to maximize their learning opportunities.